I want to thank Jeff for inviting me and allowing me to talk about anything I wanted to talk about. I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed with the size of this audience. It's a huge audience. I know you're not all here to hear me, but some of you are. And uh, there, there is a logarithm, really, that I'm a very much aware of, that as I grow older, the audiences get larger and larger. Um, that's very affirming, very affirming. But, but, if I put on my existential spectacles, there's a dark side of that, too. Uh, you know, the dark side screeching in effect. What's all the rush about, anyway? Uh, if I get very loose, I think of something uh, you've seen that the, there's a new movie out called Capote. Uh, for Truman Capote, an American writer. Uh, there's an anecdote that was told uh, about Gore Vidal when Gore Vidal was given the news that Truman Capote died. His uh, response was, ah, good career move. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's being very loose. Uh, my preference when I give a, a talk is to talk about uh, the current work that I'm doing. Uh, I'm a writer. I've been a writer for the last decades, four or, four or five decades. Uh, and I usually talk about uh, the last book I've just finished or something new that I've started. I'll do uh, both of those today, I think. The, uh, the last uh, published books I've done are The Schopenhauer Cure, uh, which is a novel about group therapy. And also... Uh, 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 along with that book, I've finished the fifth edition of the Theory and Practice of Group Psychotherapy. And I'll spend the second part, the second part of the program talking about that after we'll take a little stretch halfway through. Right now, first thing I want to do is talk about the next book. Um, I'm always uh, living from one book to the other. When I finish a book, or at least when I finish the draft of a book, um, and that means for the following year or two, I'm just simply polishing and sanding and getting the sentences to sound better. The creative process is mostly over. Uh, then that part of my mind starts wandering around thinking of uh, the next project. And, and for the last uh, a year at least, I've been uh, thinking about what I want to do, slipping between two or three different uh, projects. I knew that what I wanted to do is to, is to write a book uh, about an approach to the therapy called existential psychotherapy. Uh, but I've had a lot of difficulty finding just the right form for that. Uh, let me just start by uh, acknowledging the lack of clarity around the term existential psychotherapy. And I want to spend a few moments really trying to be very lucid about what I mean by it. That word, existential, what do we mean by it? Uh, often, it, it, it conjures up rather uh, elusive, uh, arcane meanings. You know, for example, we might think of West Bank Parisian philosophers like Sartre, or we might think of he heavy, impenetrable works by, by Heidegger or, or Jaspers. But forget all that. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm aiming at absolute clarity, and I'm using the term in a very simple, straightforward way, simply to refer to existence. It's hard to think of saying existence therapy. It doesn't sound right. Uh, it's too cumbersome to say existence-focused therapy. So I'm using existential, the word existential, simply as an adjective describing this kind of approach to therapy. So existential therapy means simply a therapy focused on concerns emerging from the nature of our existence. It's, it's based on a particular view of life, a view of life that's derived, I think, entirely from a meditation without any preconceptions uh, about our, upon our own uh, being. And it refers to a particular view uh, that we're here through random events, that we are alone, we're thrown alone into existence and have to leave the world alone, that we're responsible 
for carving out our own life pattern, uh, our own meaning. It means that we humans are the measure and compass of all things. In other words, we have no predestined fate. We're sentenced to freedom. And most of all, most of all, it means that we are finite. We're like every living creature. We have one life. We want to persist in our own being, and yet we all have to face inevitable death.